All right, let's take a look at um, images in curved mirrors. Now, we've already discussed images in plane mirrors, and it's something you're relatively familiar with. We've all stood in front of a, a mirror, and we've seen the image of ourself. We know that it's, you know, it's about the same size. It's on the other side of the mirror. Um, it's it's upright. It's not like you're standing on your head, although it does have what's called lateral inversion. So your left seems like it's your right, and your right seems like it's left. Um, and we know from previous lessons that the type is a virtual one and we know that it's a virtual image because the light rays aren't actually creating the image in behind the mirror um, it's not like light can pass through the mirror and through the wall and create an image there it's it's a virtual it's it's an it's a trick of the light okay but in a curved mirror we're going to see that things don't always work the same right depending on where we place our object our image is going to move around. So we're going to keep this simple. I'm, I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you one example, and then you'll have the opportunity to kind of play around and, and move your object around to different places in front of the mirror and see what actually happens. So we have on on the page here is we have a curved mirror. So this is the front of the mirror. So this is in behind. Um, we've got our vertex here where the principal axis meets. Uh, where the principal axis meets the meets the mirror. Uh, we have our focal point and then we have our center of curvature. And a reminder, the center of curvature is the center of the sphere if that mirror had been uh, drawn out in a full circle. And then the focal point is exactly halfway between the vertex and the center of curvature. So let's just randomly place an object somewhere in front of our mirror. Something to, to note, um, in a lot of drawings and a lot of textbooks you'll see that they use an arrow for their object which really makes things confusing because when the object is an arrow and then all of the light rays coming off of it are also arrows and then when you draw the image it's also an arrow it can make things a little complicated now the reasoning behind it is that an arrow and i'll just quickly draw one over here a basic arrow is very easy to see whether it's upright or upside down, all right? So that is why they use an arrow typically. It's a, it's a very simple drawing that allows you to very easily see whether it's been, it's upright or inverted. But instead, I'm, I'm just gonna use a little person because I think that works just as well as using an arrow. It's a little bit more to draw, but at least then it's not going to be confused with another arrow of a light ray. Okay. Um, all right. So we are going to use light rays to try to determine where this, the object, or sorry, the image of this object is. Now, what we've learned before is when we're trying to find the image of an object, you draw light rays from it. And then where those light rays meet is where the image will, will occur. And if you have a complicated object, like a person, for example, you're going to have to use more than one point on the object. Now, typically, in examples, the object is going to be actually sitting on the parallel axis. And that is actually going to make things easier for us as we go along. So I'm going to start off using the very top of this person's head as one of my um, or as, as the origin for my light rays, all right? So my light ray number one, I'm gonna come off top of the head. And as always, make sure we have our, in, uh, we indicate our direction of travel for the arrow, uh, for the light ray. It's gonna bounce off through the focus. So this is principal ray number one. If it starts parallel, it will bounce back through the focus. And notice I'm making this nice and long, extending it far out, because we don't know where this image is gonna end up. The image can end up here, the image could end up over here, we, we don't know, all right? So we'll start off with that. Now, the second ray, um, well, the second ray of, of the four principal rays was going through the center of curvature. So let's let's do that. Now, this is a little weird because if I were to take the head and draw a, a, a ray to going through the center of curvature, it's, it's going this way, right? That's, that's not a reflected ray. But remember, if a light ray 
is lined up with the center of curvature, it's gonna bounce straight back. So if I have a light ray going out towards the mirror and have it bounce straight back through the center, that's where it's gonna go, all right? And now number three is going from the top of the head through the focal point. It's gonna go down here. So if we take a light ray going through the focal point, and as always, make sure we have our direction there and it comes back parallel, we get something like that. Now, here's where things get potentially a little bit annoying. This is not a perfect mirror. It is not a perfect curve. So our light rays don't all end up meeting up in the exact same spot. I mean, see, we've got a, a cross over here, we've got a cross over here, we've got a cross over here. But they're all relatively close together and they're close enough um, that we can approximate where those light rays will meet. And where those light rays meet is where the image will be. Well, we are starting from the tip of the head. So we're gonna say the tip of the head is right here. Now the question is, where does the rest of the body go? Right? Is, is the person going to be standing this way? Is the person going to be standing this way, this way, this way? Well, this goes back to what I was saying where using the principal axis as one of the positions for our object makes things a little bit easier. Because if I have rays coming from here, well, if I go through the focal point, it bounces back along the principal axis. If I go along the principal axis, it goes back to the focal point. If I go through the center, it comes back to the center. So all of the possible rays are all gonna be along this principal axis, right? So that tells us that any object or any part of an object that is on the principal axis, the image of it is also gonna be on the principal axis. And where it's gonna end up is directly lined up with this. All right, so our object, or sorry, the image of the top of the head is here. The image of the bottom of the feet will be here. So that tells us that our person will be there. All right, so we have one ray, two rays, three rays meeting all approximately here. So that tells us our image is gonna be there. Now, that leads us to salt. Well, previously for salt, the description was fairly simple. Where is the object? How big is it, etc. Now we have to take into account the fact that we're dealing with more complicated results and we're dealing with more complicated positions, all right? So what we're gonna have to do is be more specific in our descriptions. Well, first of all, the size of the image compared to the object I think it's clear that it is quite a bit larger, all right? So our All right, let me just move this down so you can actually see it. All right. So, I think it's pretty clear that our our object, or sorry, our image is quite a bit larger than the object. The attitude is now it's upside down and we call that inverted, I'm writing this upside down as best as I can, not too badly. So it will be inverted, the location. Now, before, the only location that we used was behind, behind the mirror. But now we can be a lot more specific because we have some reference points that we can use. So we can say that an image is between the mirror and the focal point. We can say it's at the focal point. We can say it's between the focal point and C or the center of curvature. We can say it's at center of curvature, or we can say it is what is called beyond C, or beyond the center of curvature. So the location for this image would be beyond C. And then finally, the type, whether it's real or virtual. And remember the rule. If light rays actually meet where the image is created, it's real. If you have to extrapolate back to figure out where those light rays go, it's virtual. Well, in this case, the light rays actually meet here. 
So in this case, we have a real image.